Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome to a brand new video. We're finally back, the last couple of days have been chaotic to say the least, but we're not here to talk about that, not in this video at least. Instead, we're hopping back in, chilling out, having some fun, cracking a few jokes. Is this a funny hat? This is a funny hat to wear? Looks- I thought it was funny. And watching a brand new Game Theory video on FNAF Security Breach, and this one I'm looking forward to, because I believe it actually tackles the Blob, which is a character that I personally love and think is way, way too much hated, just because people don't understand him. He's a complex character, you know? Not saying- there's a spider on my hat. Not even joking. All right, well, we're not gonna wear the Sunny D hat anymore. All right, well, let's just not waste any more time. Joke's out of the way, intro out of the way. Let's hop into a brand new game theory. FNAF, the final security breach mystery solved. Interesting, I do wonder if this is gonna be the final FNAF uh, security breach game theory, at least for a little bit. So without further ado, let's hop into the episode. Once again, like button, subscribe. You already know what to do. Here we go. At this point, we've solved every lingering mystery from security breach. We looked at this thing from top to bottom. Every Glamrock single one. Freddy, Golden Freddy, the missing Bonnie, the infuriating patient 46. We connected every Did detail. we solve that we though? We called every child a robot. And that's <laughs> where I was happy to leave it. FNAF dead and buried once more. Except for that time I talked about the potential real life ARG, but we're just going to ignore that that ever happened. Yeah, let's but just now, skip over that one. We didn't got to talk about that. <laughs> from the ashes. With the drop of a brand new DLC teaser a month ago and the start of a brand new book series literally this I do week, have it. FNAF is back. It's on my desk right now. Lally's game. Back I gotta hop into reading it. I was scared to talk about when I was doing theories earlier this year. It's the one topic that very few have spoken about because it's just so darn confusing. Uh, I appreciate that that probably doesn't narrow it down a whole bunch because let's face it, <laughs> it does this it. game's lore feels that way. But this, <laughs> even after claiming we've solved it, level. still Red doesn't narrow it down. Girls, it's time to talk about the blob. My boy. Oh, my blobby boy. Hello, internet. Welcome, Welcome to, to Game, Game Theory. Theory. The show that's full Classic. of so much agony from analyzing FNAF, it could probably bring its own animatronic to life. Maybe then I'd finally get a vacation. Soon, my precious. So, you heard the cold open, no, there's new FNAF That doesn't book, sound like a good idea, teaser. Matt. But before I get to any of that, there's one topic that all of us left lingering from Security Breach. Everyone's favorite massive the animatronic blob parts and black tentacles, the Blob. Yay. Or, as I like to call him, Freddy Spaghetti. On that note, by the way, <laughs> it I does don't know fit. if you're aware, but FNAF is in the process of becoming a real pizza place. Uh, no, I am aware. Real, real. Basically, they're doing the same ghost kitchen stuff that Mr. Beast did for his food And they gotta have a Freddy Spaghetti make extra food name under a for brand. Spaghetti. Actually, did a food theory explaining it all. Come on, it, it fits too well. Really fascinating stuff and very relevant to the Though I don't see now. how they anyway, with do a real spaghetti. Life Freddy's comes the need delivery. for some real life food. And if Freddy's spaghetti is not an I'm, item on that th menu, that's what I'm so saying. Me, I will write a politely worded letter to their social media account and kindly request to <laughs> reconsider. Anyway, the blob was it's gotta be there. a mystery that no one could crack. Then you've got the blob as well. The blob's just on another level. Lewis Dockos Dockins. Complicated. With the blob, there are so many animatronic bodies there that have no reason to be there. I'm gonna take a stab <laughs> in the dark. I think I put Henry in the blob. The blob is just the catch-all. All oh. Of the <laughs> and, and I think we have It's in that. It's in the blob. But you know what? It's Interesting theory. Just throwing all our unanswered questions into this literal landfill of a character. Today, we're getting some definitive answers as to what and who this thing might actually be. Mm -hmm. Those answers are gonna do two things for us. One, they'll absolutely help clarify how we talk about this franchise. I feel like forward. we say that every and time, two, Matthew. they'll certainly have severe implications for the ruined DLC that's coming out early next Definitely. year. So in the event that you repress this game, and specifically this character in your memory like I did, here's the <laughs> quickest of reminders. In Security Breach, if you stay past 6 a.m. and defeat all the other animatronics, you're able to descend down into the basement of the Pizzaplex. It's there that you discover the remains of the FNAF 6 I restaurant with a big me. old hole in the middle. Try to go down that hole on your own, and you're immediately jump-scared by the face of Funtime Freddy attached to a big, oily tentacle. But hop into yeah. Glamrock Freddy, and he protects you, saying that his friends are here, and that they're angry and confused. Then, during the Afton fight, right. those same oily tentacles pop in from the vents, trying to capture you or anyone, to be honest. Burn <laughs> Afton enough times and you get the final cutscene where the blob returns to drag Afton off into the ceiling to keep him in cold storage until the next game. And because this is one Let's of go. only He's handful coming of back again. In security breach, everyone <laughs> assumes that this is the true canon ending of the game. So, figuring out what this thing is meant it's to gotta be, be must be you don't bring back Afton, right? So, I guess and it's, it's not time a canon ending. Stop stalling and start theorizing. The 
best place to start is to understand what exactly this thing's made out of. Because really, it's a who's who of FNAF history. <laughs> Obviously, we see Funtime Freddy as its main face. As you're descending down through the hole, though, you Chica. can definitely make out FNAF Bonnie. 1's Chica. The shape of the head and the torso are a dead giveaway here. Peeking out is also FNAF 1's Bonnie. Notice the coloring of it and the lack of rosy cheeks. We also have right. a few random arms and legs popping out. These all match the style of FNAF 1 animatronics. Notice the three toes on the feet and the three fingers and thumb with no joints on the fingers of the hands. And right. that's sounds about all that you can make out from just looking at this thing in the game. But if you extract a lot the more model on and the look model. at all the other sides, you find that there's a lot Very more interesting here. details Mangle too. is hanging out directly opposite Freddy's face. And if you look closely, you can also find its rib cage, arm, and two of its feet hanging out elsewhere. Low on one side of the blob is the puppet's no mask. Tears. Except it's missing one major detail. The iconic tears yep. are gone. That is a huge clue that we're going to need to address. And finally, we have Circus Baby's mask, the only one of the animatronics to not have her eyes lit up. Again, that is a huge mm. detail that has to be important to this thing in some way. Baby's arm is also hanging around inside this thing. <laughs> we know it's definitely Baby's and not Funtime Freddy's because Baby's hands have rounded silver tips on the fingers, just like we see here. Right. Like I said, it is a real mishmash of animatronics. It's almost like Steel Wool wanted a one-stop shop for FNAF's greatest hits. And weird details like Baby's joke, eyes always being extinguished and the puppet's missing tears feel like the game trying to tell us something, but what? Well, after identifying each and every arm and leg sticking out of this thing, there was still one animatronic in the spaghetti that really got my Matt Pat tingle going. Right. This guy right here, hidden away at the very bottom of the mess, hey, is a dude. naked endoskeleton consisting of a single animatronic head. Two Wait, do arms, I know who this is? Shoot. Eye, with a body position that I forgot looks about like this it's guy. desperately hey. trying to pull itself out. His position right at the bottom also felt like he was intentionally hidden, the kind of thing that you would overlook a few times, but clearly he's meant to be important. He's the only animatronic in this mess that's missing an eye, but his other eye is illuminated, which immediately puts him on the same level as the more iconic characters right? that we okay. see absorbed into this bizarre amalgamation. So, who is it? What is it? Just a random endoskeleton? No, couldn't be. But to know for sure, I had to look closer. My first instinct was that it must be Golden Freddy. I mean, looking at the roster of characters inside the block, pretty much every major animatronic is represented in some way. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Puppet, Baby, all of them are here, but Golden Freddy is strangely absent. Plus, with the animatronic only having one eye, I thought that maybe it was discreetly hinting at the fact that while the crying child spirit was released Ooh, at the good ending of the FNAF 3, another spirit remained trapped in the metal. Cassidy, the vengeful spirit, still here and still angry. It felt very reminiscent of the two endings of FNAF 3. In case you don't recall, FNAF 3 was right. the first game in the series to choose a lit good up. and bad ending. Finding all the secret minigames led you to Happiest Day, where the souls of the dead kids are put to rest and were given a final image of unlit animatronic heads. But if you just finish the game normally, you instead get this, the bad ending. Yep. An image of those exact same masks, but each one with one eye lit up. A spirit remains in each body. Well, all of them except for Golden Freddy's mask in the background, which has two eyes lit. Two eyes for two spirits. Okay. And in intervening years, one has been So released. are you saying However, it's Golden Freddy, or are you just of pieces going off a tangent? Up, there was one glaring issue here. Golden Freddy doesn't have himself an endoskeleton. He's a spring lock suit. It's why Golden Freddy is always hunched over. He has no skeleton, no frame. So if Golden Freddy's now off the table, who else could it be? Well, obviously his defining feature is that one lit eye. But it's not only that one eye is lit, it's that he's physically missing the second eye. So I sat down and went through my mind's it encyclopedia is also, FNAF lore to remember like what other characters two. only have one eye. So probably FNAF I thought two Foxy character. might make a good contender, except Foxy isn't actually missing an eye. He just has one covered up by an eye patch. Same thing for Withered Foxy. Maybe right. it could be Lefty, the strange black animatronic bear from FNAF 6 that was designed as a capture suit for the puppet. Nope, the eye that's missing is on the wrong side. You know what? Forget it. Maybe it is just a random endoskeleton because why not? It's security breach. But you know what? It's not that either. You see, FNAF 1 endoskeletons are canonically more boxy and streamlined, not this guy. The this body is in the blob is actually going on for a while, Matthew. O2 models that we see yes. used in FNAF 2. Those yes. have thin spring like coils around that their main correct. skeleton. But even then, what we see in the blob is different. Notice the thick round discs that are directly connected to the skeletal structure. You don't see that in Endo O2s. It's almost like these things' arms are actually its legs. But that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, or does it? Because there is it, one does animatronic it? <laughs> that actually has hands connecting to leg joints. What? With an Endo O2 head that's missing its right eye. One with wires hanging out the side and with four rounded fingers at the end of each hand. It is the mangle. Just, you know, it's mangle's other head. That weird guy who's just kind of We spent like five minutes body. on this. It is a direct match. And it's just a mangle okay, again, Matthew? I was excited to identify this mystery animatronic. What was the but, uh, point? Also, what yeah, was the point? 
disappointed. This weird animatronic that's trying to pull itself out of the bottom of the blob feels like it should mean something special, but Mangle being the answer just feels empty. Like, yeah, we already know Mangle's in this thing. The head is very obvious on the body. So, uh, like so much else <laughs> inside of this game, it was a mystery that led to a dead end. But oh, hey, now that we the have point? the definitive roster of who's inside this thing, we can actually start to figure out why they're we inside did have this it like thing. Seven because minutes these ago. are some weird picks. When last we left everyone, we had Molten Freddy and Scrap Baby. So why do we now have older versions of these animatronics inside the blob? Also, how do we suddenly have FNAF 1 and 2 era animatronics mixed in when none of these older models <laughs> were a part of FNAF 6's fire? Can someone please just use anything other than fire to kill these things? If at first you don't succeed, try to I'm try waiting again. for but the FNAF game where we just, we're full on strapped. Like, you know we got <laughs> guns. Else. Silver bullet. Have we so tried shooting them? Literally anything. Honestly, this was the main reason I didn't want to cover the blob. It just felt like one big continuity error. But now that I've come to the end of my sanity trying to determine what animatronic a finger belongs to, I think an <laughs> answer has presented itself to me through the darkness. And you know what? I was wrong. Dead wrong. So the opening area of security breach is Rockstar Row, and it's Correct. full of memorabilia from the past pizzerias. You got stuff like OG Foxy's torso and jaw oh, placed inside a display Please tell me case. he does the There's theory where the Bonnie's blob guitar, takes Freddy's bow tie, things Chica's from the display cases. Because like I love that one. Leg pieces. I like but that one. it's not the items that are there that are interesting, it's the ones that are missing. Yes. If you look closely at these display cases, the majority of them have at least one missing item with a small description plaque in front of the empty space. Unfortunately, we can't see what exactly is on the plaques, but if torsos and feet are being displayed, then it isn't too hard to imagine yes. that these could have been the heads, masks, arms, items that have been collected and added to the blob. In fact, I like this theory. Why I've always Circus liked this one. Fun time Freddy I think it's cool. Of the blob. Instead of Scrap Baby and Molten Freddy. Makes it's sense, not yeah. a continuity error like all of us assumed. It's just a really obscure lore point. Remember that FNAF sister location ended with all the animatronics teamed up to form Ennard. A literal tangle of wires and eyeballs, <laughs> and that was pretty much it. But once Ennard was puked up and Baby got voted out of the team, that tangle so of wires needed shape and form. This, in turn, gave rise to Scrap Baby and Molten Freddy. Creatures created from literal trash, not <laughs> official versions of the characters. That's right. For as much as they might look like the original characters. As far as Fazbear Entertainment memorabilia is concerned, the Circus Baby Mask and Funtime Freddy Head, they're the latest versions of those characters. They're put on display for fans of the series to see. Parts that this tangle of black goo could steal from the displays and absorb into its own being. Same with the OG suits and Mangle Body. Scrap Makes sense. Baby and Molten Freddy, meanwhile, they're I unofficial like it. characters. They were never created by Fazbear Entertainment or displayed inside of a pizzeria. In short, I'm sorry, Steel Wool. I I'm not sorry about a oh. lot of the things I've said about some of the lore decisions in this game, but in this individual case, right, still sticking I'm sorry with it, Matt. I that this was just a I respect continuity it. error when in actuality it was a lot more thoughtful than I could have ever expected. We just didn't give you enough benefit of the doubt here. So, like an overeager Funko Pop collector, there's a tangle of black wires lurking in the pizza plex hunting for souvenirs from the franchise. And believe it or not, this actually lines up with a random detail from not the, the story books. new no. in the third I don't know anything Bright about the books. As a group of kids are exploring an abandoned Freddy's restaurant, we get this line, quote, while they were in the bathroom, Devin was pretty sure he heard something slithering through the walls. He didn't say anything. From the way the other boys' faces pale, he knew they heard it too. That is the line, and it never pays off. Not in this story, not in this book, not in the entire book series. The whole story did get actually the box winds set. up being a Golden Freddy story, strangely enough. But so it I leaves Chekhov's tentacle monster just sitting there in the walls waiting to be used. Probably because it was meant to pay off in Security Breach, a game that was originally meant to release closer to that story's publication. But the repeated delays in security breach through all of that synergistic programming off. All right, so we know why sure. it physically looks the way it does, but really, sure. <laughs> what are these tentacles? Well, that's where the puppet mask missing tears comes in. I think we're all familiar with this thing's story, right? In the aftermath of kids getting killed at Freddy's restaurants, the creator Henry right back, a security program uh, in the 2014. form of the puppet. In FNAF 6, we literally see this Out thing called the security puppet. Sadly, Henry's daughter Charlie is killed outside of the confines of the restaurant. The puppet finds her too late and lies down beside her in the rain, and the two become one. And in FNAF 6, the last official time that we see this character, it comes complete with tears in its eyes. In fact, in every iteration of the character, the but puppet the mini mask game one tears. doesn't. Or should I say almost every iteration? Right? Look at the security puppet minigame yes. from before Charlie's death. The see, I know my stuff, guys. No tears. It's only after Charlie dies and the thing is possessed that tears suddenly form on the mask. Tears mean that Charlie's soul is inside of this thing. But now, there are now no it's tears gone. left on the mask because Charlie's soul has 
been released. She's no longer inside Security Puppet. When Henry burned everything oh. at the end of FNAF 6, it worked! Kinda. It freed all the souls that were trapped inside of the metal. This coincides with what we see on the blueprints for Remnant. Overheating might neutralize the effects permanently. However, it didn't work all the way. There's one thing that Henry's fire didn't account for. Something that it didn't purge. Agony. You see, Remnant soul metal might be the focus of the games, but it isn't the only powerful force that drives this franchise forward. Okay. The other is actually found within the pages of the Fazbear Frights books. Agony. Now, it's important to distinguish the difference between Agony and Remnant. I've seen a lot of places using the terms interchangeably, but in Fazbear Frights, they're explained to be distinctly different. Remnant is all about the soul. When an animatronic becomes possessed, that spirit literally becomes attached to the metal. That metal <laughs> can then be melted down into a substance that Fazbear Frights describes as a boiling liquid mercury, aka Remnant. If you inject right. that metal into other animatronics, it suddenly brings them to life using the power of the original souls. Compare that to Agony. In the books, Agony is studied by Dr. Phineas Taggart. He states that <laughs> Agony, quote, has a greater energetic radius and power than any other emotion. I've done numerous wow. experiments to measure, capture, contain, and study the leftover emotion embedded into objects that were near a tragedy. The book even goes so far to explain that the items Phineas has collected weren't possessed by Jeez. ghosts or spirits, but instead were energized by Agony. So when someone feels Agony, it doesn't just stay with them, it can infect inanimate objects around them and linger there. In other words, while those original animatronics no longer have spirits powering them, the agony they felt while being murdered remains attached to the suits. Okay. That's why the Blob's interested in collecting the suits. It's not collecting spirits, it's collecting agony. By combining them, it becomes more powerful. All the pain and suffering of the children from over the years brought together to create one giant monster. That's why the eyes are glowing red for all the animatronics and endoskeletons. It's also why the puppet and baby aren't glowing. The puppet Makes has been sense. put to rest by her father. She's I no like it. Torment. Johnny Block's daughter, approved. If you can hear me, it's oh, such a good ending. For you and for those you have Great buried speech. in your arms. And baby, well, yeah, she is certainly angry. She is jealous, but she's also <laughs> eager to please her father even after death. Now we can do what we were created to do and be complete. I right. will make you proud, daddy. She embraces the monster that she's become. She's not filled with agony, but everyone else? Absolutely. Even in that finale speech, we hear Henry say it. This place will not be remembered. The agony and the of everything. Of everything that started Almost this got it right. And finally begin to fade away as the agony of every <laughs> well, tragedy should. Almost agony. nailed it. Woo! He did it. He said the word. So there you have it, friends. Over half a year after the game's release, we finally God, saw it's the already last been seven months. Breach. The Blob isn't a I giant can't believe continuity that. breaker. It's just a very cleverly composed amalgamation of animatronic parts slithering through the walls, looking to accumulate agony. The tortured emotions coming from all the old animatronics on display throughout the pizza plex. And now that we've solved it, not convinced that we've seen the last of it. Despite the fact that the Afton ending's only worth two stars, aren't there like some three, technically the wires on the poster? The story's gonna follow this particular ending. I think Notice the melted parts of Chica's face, right. the ruined pizza plex, which directly follows the building collapse and Afton's ending. But look a little closer. There are mysterious red eyes up in the top oh, left, as well as some suspicious looking cables down bottom right. the bottom right. Even yep. if the blob did finally kill Afton during the ending, the agony would still remain. It perseveres beyond death, and it isn't able to simply let go. In short, the blob is still very So how do you get rid of it, though? That powerful than <laughs> That's my question. Faced in, the franchise. in fact, maybe my pre previous prediction about the Afton amalgamation could still come to pass. As I called out in a previous well. theory, in the books, Afton gets mixed up with a bunch of agony which creates a giant monster trash rabbit. And uh, isn't that exactly what we're seeing in the ending of Security Breach? Afton mixed in with a bunch of agony parts. I suspect that Afton may be able Ooh. to take control of this thing, overriding the blood. That's a direction fascinating idea. And focusing it in order to wreak havoc on Gregory and whoever this new character might be, just like he does during the Stitch Wraith stories from Fazbear Frights. The only issue is, I'm not sure how we'd be able to stop it. In Fazbear Frights, the solution is right. to see into people's memories and trap them inside those memories. It's a pretty what random the power, what? it's hard to say how that might work in the games. Unless, of course, this <laughs> new character is meant to be someone that could remind Afton or the Blob of good memories bringing them back to reality and quelling the agony. <laughs> I, I, don't, but, I can't uh, think of a single friend, good memory a William might have. Another day. So in the meantime, remember, it's all just a theory. A, a game, game theory. theory. Thanks for watching. Oh my watching. god, we said at the same time. Yeah, because if you say, like, damn, dude, William, don't forget about, like, your kids. They love you. But they all hate them. You know, like, dude, your wife or, like, you know, 
your family, they probably don't love you because you're also a murderer, also your wife probably left you. So probably not any <laughs> any good memories uh, <laughs> to make him recall, but whatever. Hey, this was a good theory. I liked it. I've always been a fan of the blob collecting the items from the display cases in Rockstar Row. I think that makes the most sense to me. I'm not a theorizer. You know, I don't go too in-depth with lore. Um, but it's a pretty straightforward one. I think Matt made a lot of great points, actually. Who knows? Maybe this is another scenario where I, I react to the video and I'm like, oh, that's so interesting. You know, I like that theory. And then I look online and everyone's like, damn, that's such a dumb theory. But I feel like that happens with every Game Theory FNAF video, so. <laughs> but hey, that's gonna do it for now. Another interesting theory video by our dear friend Matthew Patrick. Tell me, what do you think in the comments down below? Do you agree? Do you disagree with the theory? What theories do you have yourself personally? Do you think we're going to see the Blob and uh, Afton Burn Trap in the Ruin DLC? I have been thinking of a few theories for the DLC that I'd love to turn into a video at uh, some point pretty soon, especially with this video coming out. It seems like people still got DLC theorizing on their mind. But like I said, that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.